Well, the release of uh, juveniles arrested for crimes really has been a hot topic in Baltimore recently. But how often is it really happening? WMAR 2 News Elizabeth Worthington found out. It was a question a lot of people in Baltimore still want the answer to. That question was asked by a man at a recent town hall about juvenile crime. If a kid is arrested for stealing a car several times, why does the Department of Juvenile Services let that kid go home? I'm asking this question because I know of a juvenile that is causing many problems in the Southern District. He has been taken in over nine times, over nine times for stealing cars, robbing people, carjacking people. This kid is on the streets as of right now. The head of DJS, Secretary Vincent Chiraldi, couldn't supply an answer. I, I don't know the details of these cases typically, when I hear stuff like this and I look into the details, it's far more complicated than what I'm hearing. It's not complicated, sir. So, I, mean, I, I don't know what's happened in this And just last week, DJS fired the intake director at Baltimore's juvenile detention facility after an investigation into the premature release of two teens arrested for assaulting and robbing a woman in November. But we don't like to rely solely on anecdotes. So we submitted a Public Information Act request to DJS to get some data. We found that from 2021 to 2023, the number of juvenile complaints more than doubled in Baltimore. But the percentage of kids who were actually detained went down. 24% of all juvenile complaints led to detention in 2021. In 2023, it was 13%. And the average length of stay in a facility also went down from 23 days to 16. We asked Katherine Rosenblatt, head of the juvenile division in the state's attorney's office, to weigh in. I can tell you from anecdotal experience, um, it's pretty difficult to actually get a kid held at BCJJC pending their adjudication. Um, it is much more common to have the kid released back um, to family home or guardian while on some form of electronic monitoring. So why is this happening? By law, DJS has to refer all violent cases like carjackings to the state's attorney's office. But what the Juvenile Justice Reform Act changed in 2022 is that juveniles arrested for some nonviolent offenses like car thefts can be diverted without prosecutor approval. So it's DJS making those decisions about those cases completely independently. At that same town hall where neighbors pressed DJS on why so many kids were being sent home after committing a crime, Rosenblatt publicly expressed her concerns with the department. Currently, DJS acts as a gatekeeper of sorts in that we have to wait for them to forward us cases to charge. It doesn't matter if a juvenile has been arrested. DJS can send them home without the state's attorney's office or a judge or a magistrate reviewing the case. In a recent end of year interview recapping 2023 and looking ahead to 2024, we asked Secretary Schiraldi what he thinks needs to change. We need to do a lot more work on fixing the way we administer youth justice, not much in terms of how we change the laws. The laws are actually in decent shape. The state's attorney's office does want to see some changes in the law. Rosenblatt says one of the biggest priorities is requiring any juveniles arrested for a car theft or gun crime be immediately referred to their office for charging and seen before a judge within 24 hours. And state's attorney Ivan Bates said at the end of the year he wanted to increase the probationary period for such crimes. I do think Secretary Chiraldi, just as much as my office, wants to move away from the churn of kids mm -hmm. simply reoffending their way through the system until they get to be adults. Right. Um, that's certainly an indication that the juvenile system isn't working if the kids just keep churning through until they hit 18. Among legislators, there does seem to be an appetite for changes to the Juvenile Justice Reform Act. The legislative session begins on January 10th. In Baltimore, Elizabeth Worthington, WMAR 2 News.